Eminem just released a lead single for his upcoming album under the title Houdini. And a lot of people found some of his lyrics to be quite offensive. Uh, first off, one that specifically targeted Megan the Stallion over her getting shot in the foot by Tory Lanez. The lyric read, if I was to ask for Megan the Stallion, if she would collab with me, would I really have a shot at a feat? It's, it's a not play on even words yeah it's on it's it wasn't even like that crazy but a lot of people were accusing Eminem of being racist and misogynist because he's mocking a black woman's trauma yeah. her trauma um, a and 20 the there from Roman Nation oh. says what's next marine commercials uh, marine commercials will be seen as violence hi Brett oh I know that guy that guy's in the Discord hello Roma hello, hello. Roma Nation hello. Um, the, the conversation about Gen Z trying to cancel Eminem was reignited because of this. Yeah, so it originally happened because of his song with Rihanna. Um, that was the initial reason they it were mad at him. It glorified domestic, domestic violence. violence. And I, you know, anybody who listened to Eminem from the Marshall Mathers, uh, from the Slim Shady LP all the way up, understands that there was far, far worse that he has made music about in the past. Which, that he said about the mother of his child. <laughs> what, what I think is funny about that is like, okay, so I listened to the new single. It was fine. I thought it had weird pacing and, and it felt very stop and start. But lyrically, he's as talented as he ever was, I guess. It just didn't really land. That's an anywhere. awfully hot coffee oh, pot. But Should the, I the, pour it on Donald Trump? Probably not. The problem is, is like, there's a, there's, a, um, there's a disconnect now because people understand that no matter how crazy of a statement he makes, he is the establishment, so there's not really anything edgy about it. Mm -hmm. Anything he said had to go through 10,000 hands before it made it to air the music video is very very high quality high production value the de-aging they have a de-aged version of him in the video like yeah, him he, and himself it's eminem facing off with his Slim alter Shady. ego yeah. from years ago and like, like doing it in the least edgy way is, possible he's a he's 50 years old yeah. he's got three kids he's worth hundreds of millions of dollars got three kids uh two or three kids um Something like that. his his daughter just got married like last week yeah i he's only a, know about the impressively hot daughter. dad energy and the song was fine but it's got a very specific audience and that's gen x and millennials and i think to gen z and in younger it's just gonna come off as a bit lame but it's not bad per se it's going for the audience it's looking for it's going to reach just fine it's already doing very good numbers music video wise and, and sales wise some of the comments imagine bringing up someone's trauma and it's not even a bar another one said <laughs> he bar. can't do nothing without mentioning a black woman's name uh, another said unprovoked and unnecessary here's, here's the thing <laughs> he's a rapper and the majority of the community is black. So if he's going to do what he's always done, which is to make diss tracks and uh, start beef with people, that's going to happen. It's not like that's, you know, without precedent in rap music. Correct. It's like we just watched the Kendrick Lamar. If you want to make him feel right? better, he made he, he, he hurt Machine Gun Kelly so bad he switched genres. That's a white <laughs> dude. Uh, and then another lyric that was in this song is about his transgender cat. Um, he said, my transgender cat Siamese identifies as black but acts Chinese. It's it's very. He also talks about hitting. Wah, an eighth, wah. He talks about hitting. <laughs> he talks about hitting an eighth grader with a participation trophy, and I literally felt him turn into a boomer. It was as he, it was boomer rap. Yes. That's what it was. Ew, it was. stop no. And no. you know, if Gen Z is trying to cancel Eminem, it's not because he was like too offensive. It's just because he's he's giving boomer energy. No, no, I I do believe that plenty of them are offended. That, that's like, once you <laughs> made, once they made it about race, they are offended. Yeah, I mean, they were really mad about the Megan Thee Stallion line, not the other stuff. There was also a really funny poll where somebody did who's like, he's so racist and awful. Who's better, Megan Thee Stallion or Eminem? And 98% said Eminem. And also just the numbers prove that. Yes. Obviously. Yeah. Uh, and and look, in today's day where the, the media curtain has been pulled back, we understand how these things work now. It, nobody's buying edginess from establishment media personalities. No. Mm -hmm. Like he waited till 2024 to make the joke when it's safe to make the joke. Right. Exactly. Um, I also wanted to recall for everyone that awful 
cringe video of a millennial woman responding to Gen Z for yes. canceling Eminem. We can, uh, we can listen to this here. There's boomer cringe and then there's millennial cringe. It's a whole other level. This is, we've watched this before, yeah, right? Yeah, I think the Guys, so. I, I do want to prepare you because it's bad. It's really bad. So here we go. What? Damn it, we're going to get copyrighted for the damn background music too. Here oh. we go. Gen Z's trying to what? Cancel Eminem. Gen Z's trying to cancel Eminem? Honey, that's cute. Listen, little kitties, let me make this quite clear. This man was around even before you were here. So what, you're all mad because the man was a lyricist while all your rappers are a mumbling gibberish? No, go ahead and shut your mouth. Better yet, go and sit your ass in time out because boy was running laps even before you could walk. Hell, boy was spitting balls even before you could talk. So no, afraid you're null in, boy, dear. I'm afraid your opinion don't matter here because one day you'll grow up and see how everyone went and forgot about Z. Okay. Christ. This whole episode has been women being unhinged. <laughs> Like, what is wrong? The only way with this women? could be worse is if her boyfriend recorded it. Uh, All yes. that it's entirely possible. Yeah, Christ. Well, I, I, the funny thing is, I got just as much secondhand embarrassment now as I did the first time I saw it when we showed it the first time. Also, it's funny people are saying this is unprovoked. I just saw that Megan Thee Stallion already named Eminem in one of her songs Who, it's, in it, 2021. I'm, I'm sorry. But as much as I will joke on him for the song, he is still considered one of the greatest to ever do it. So even being mentioned by him is an accomplishment. Didn't he say he's kind like not like, interested in being in the goat conversation anymore? Kind of like because uh, it got oddly racial. It, yeah, it's kind of like um, it's kind of like how being parodied by Weird Al is considered an accomplishment. You should just consider it uh, a benefit that you're mm -hmm. important enough to even be mentioned by him. Yeah, also, Megan didn't say anything. Like, if she doesn't say she's offended, why do you need to be offended on someone else's behalf? That's lame. It's, uh... Also, it, I'm starting to think cancellation just doesn't mean anything anymore. Doesn't. It, like, cancel culture meant something maybe back in the late 2010s. Well, I mean, it still does for the people that where they call your work and they yeah, try to get okay. you... In, yes, for that, the, uh, for for the normal average people. people. Yes. You can't cancel someone on Eminem's level at all. Correct. That's just not humanly possible when, i mean the closest they've come is canceling kanye because um, he got debanked he got yeah. like deplatformed off social media but or even, even <laughs> cloned. Uh, people would draw uh roseanne as an example sure lost sure. her job doing there uh, are very the few and far between examples but like being offended at someone saying something yes it's lame but that's not canceling them yeah. I mean, people just use that term way too loosely now. We just, uh, it, it's the, you have to weather the storm of the complaints. Think of the, what was it? Who was it? Andrew Huberman? Like, he slept with five women and it, the story just disappeared yeah. a week later because he didn't say anything. Exactly. It's uh, the smartest choice. And it's the not, rate not of, addressing the hate. The rate of, uh, the rate of change, the velocity of change with how quickly we go from one thing to the next because all of this is tied to the news cycle. It doesn't matter because people are on to the next thing a couple days later, anyways. Mm -hmm. Just wait it out and nobody like it's not like Eminem's ever gonna have to worry about something like this It is just sad to see uh, him, you know, not be cool anymore It's like Will Smith Ooh. You just you can't even help it at a certain point You just can't be cool anymore and you My should accept that You know what I hope but Like that that's the road that J-Lo's on too Like when, yeah. listen, when you stop being top to your hot Pack it up. His more uh, his more homophobic songs and stuff that he doesn't do anymore. I hope he has like a retirement era where he's just so old he starts performing them again. Go for it. <laughs> like, I mean, like a he, yeah, he could like, literally do that now, yeah. and people would love it. But he's not going to do it because he just doesn't like. He doesn't want to. I mean, he he might pretend that you know he's not afraid of pushback and everything. Like he's still edgy, but he is afraid of the backlash. The fact that he, he kind of backed off of that persona that he used to have just shows that he's afraid of the backlash. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.